everybody. Hank Linderman here. Welcome to Friday, August 7th. Getting angry. And uh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I've had a busy day already. I get up with the sun usually, and I got to. Uh, plenty to do uh, early in the day, but this day has been an exception. By the way, I'm running for Congress here in Kentucky's second district. You're looking at a view right here of uh, Rough River. You have to get up pretty early to see that view. Barbara's here. Barbara Tichy is here. Barbara, who's, uh, Barbara, I know is going to share. Um, anyway, this is our backyard. Like I say, you got to get up real early to be able to see that. That was at about 530 in the morning central. So 630 Eastern, not so bad. I'm running for Congress here in the second district. This is my second run, um, the Democratic nominee. And um, uh, here we are getting angry. As always, we say, you know, getting angry doesn't help if you lose your damn mind. Oh, Cindy Braun is here. And uh, she says, hi, Cindy, of course, do me a favor and share. So here's what's already happened with me today. Um, I had a conversation with a gentleman from the Kentucky Democratic Party named Kenny Fogel. In fact, I think I've got a picture of him. Let me see if I can find it. I'll show you Kenny because Kenny's going to come on and talk with us next week. Uh, there's Kenny Fogel, and he's the uh, head of the Democratic Party in Nelson County. And Nelson County is, of course, the home of Bardstown. Anyway, Kenny is uh, is now working for the KDP, and they are doing a, uh, they're starting a, a thing called a uh, rural caucus. And I guess because of the contract for rural and working America, among other things, and also some recommendations from some folks around the district. I've been invited to be part of that, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's an important way forward, and I'm, I'm going to be pressing for uh, the caucus to adopt this contract for rural and working America and hopefully get that spread out further. It's a way for people who May haven't, maybe haven't thought about the problems of rural and working Americans, can get their hands, you know, can get a handle on it, can get their hands around it and start to understand it. Barbara says, I share on paydays. No kidding. Barbara is the champion. You know, she's, she's just amazing. She sends a little bit of money here and there by Venmo, and uh, Billy has put up the Venmo link so you can... Uh, you can do the same thing, and uh, it does take money to do this. Uh, we're gonna there's there's no amount too small, but we we need all that we can get. So please do us a favor. You can contribute on Venmo. You can go to our website, which is Hank Number Four KY dot com. You can also find your copy of the contract for rural and working America. And you can print it up. You can look at it, see if I've got any misspellings. Well, let's have a look at um, uh, our numbers, you know, as always. In fact, I'm going to have to hide myself here. Now, I printed this out a little bit differently this time um, because I want you to look all the way towards the right. Uh, the deaths per million of the population. We have a very high amount of deaths per million population. So notice that 492. Yesterday, 58,000 new cases, 58,611, which is alarming. 1,203 deaths to this disease, and we don't seem to be getting anywhere quickly with it. And there's a lot of frustration setting in about that. Um, I, let's look at another figure. This is from other nations. Normally, we would go straight to what the states are doing. Um, uh, I wanted to show you some other nations and how well they did it. And you'll notice, let's see, there's South Korea, number 74. South Korea actually got the disease the same day. They had their first case on January 20, 20th or 21st, depending on you know, what the report is, but who's counting. Um, and that's the same day that the United States got their first case. Now, look at South Korea's uh, deaths per million. Uh, deaths per total deaths per million population, I see six. And I have to go back because 
what was ours in the United States, 492. Now that's a pretty drastic difference between 492 people out of a million of the population. And in South Korea, a nation, by the way, that is, um, uh, South Korea is about one seventh of the population of the United States, where there are around 51 million people. And look how few deaths they have, 300 deaths total. We've had four times as many deaths as that today four times as many deaths as South Korea has had for the entire time. And I think there's a time coming that we're going to have to face the fact that this was has been mishandled from the get-go. It's been mishandled just kind of endlessly. Let's look at some other numbers. This comes from uh, Johns, Johns Hopkins University, and it shows that in the cases per day, U.S. states and territories, the U.S. South is unfortunately leading the way. And uh, of course, Kentucky is considered part of the South. We are actually not doing so bad, but when we get a little bit of a burst here in Kentucky, it's, uh, it's alarming. Now, I spoke to someone who's a friend of someone that works uh, in healthcare, and they said that they had noticed that, um, they had noticed that in Grayson County, which is where I'm at, which has had you know virtually no cases through most of June and most of July, suddenly has 28 cases. And in this small county to have 28 cases, this virus is on the loose. I think I told you that I went shopping earlier this week at a grocery store, pretty big, a national chain. And on the way in, a big sign saying, you must wear a mask. And the person guarding the door was wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask, and sure enough, there was someone who went in ahead of me, not wearing a mask, but displaying plenty of attitude. Not a lot, but enough, enough attitude to be able to tell what's going on. So people are now refusing to wear the masks, which is obviously a problem. Here's another chart to look at. I'll get rid of myself here for a second. And this uh, comes from the Federation of American Scientists. And I'm going to guess red is bad. And notice all the red states to the left. Red means that your rate is above 10%. Your infection rate is above 10%. And um, look at that. Mississippi, number one, Alabama, Florida, Nevada, Arizona, Idaho, South Carolina, Texas, Mississippi, Georgia, Arkansas, Kansas, Utah. Um, most of these are states that are in the south. Now, the next row, you'll notice even Hawaii, which has been um, Hawaii has not had, had uh, they, they killed the virus early, but they're having a bit of an outbreak. So that's not good. And I believe Kentucky is on here in the yellow area. We're kind of holding on, but not, uh, not exactly killing it. We're at number 21. Uh, folks, we're going to have to kill this virus. I mean, the, the expression that we use uh, is we have to go Godzilla. <laughs> end each day with the picture of Godzilla, so we'll, we'll end with that. But we've really got to go Godzilla on this thing, which means we're going to have to stay home, shut the economy down again, and only essential workers will be able to go to work. That's going to become required. All these other nations that did a good job, they basically shut the country down. They paid their people to stay home. Canada, I'm told, paid $2,000 a month to each citizen and um, their job was to stay home. Now, there's complaining about this. Uh, I believe there was a Republican, uh, someone in, in uh, the Senate saying, well, we're paying people to stay home. Oh, I know who it was. It was the Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin. Steve Mnuchin, you may not know this, got very wealthy as a uh, venture capitalist or a vulture capitalist. He was buying up troubled real estate after the 2008-2009 meltdown, he and some friends, and they made hundreds of millions of dollars. So he is complaining about giving people who work an extra 600 bucks a week. This is so short-sighted at camp. He said, we're paying people to stay home. Yes, yes, that's what we're doing. They need to stay home. And I'm realizing we're going to have to do something about folks who don't want to wear masks. I saw a Something on naked capitalism, I believe. They said, uh, why don't we arrest them? Seems simple to me. 
Uh, Nelson Duffel is here. Hi, Nelson. Please do us a favor and share. Because when you share, an angel gets their wings, or at least, at least that's our hope. Um, anyway, we're going to have to do something about folks who are unwilling to wear a mask. And, uh, you know, one, one website suggested arresting them. I mentioned this to a friend, and they said, well, maybe how about a ticket? But we are going to have to do something about it because dealing with the virus is not about uh, protecting yourself. It's about protecting other people. I wear my mask partially to protect me, but more if I'm sick and I'm going in through a grocery store, it's to prevent my air, my, you know, any germs that are in my breath uh, going out. And what protects me is you wearing your mask. So I'm going to ask you to do that, please. And if you don't want to, we're going to have a problem. Now wait just a damn minute. As Chris Kabali would say, now wait just a damn minute. You need to wear your mask. So that's, you know, that's where I'm at on that. Let's see. Here's our numbers. Let's carry on. Let's see. Oh, so this is a picture. If you haven't seen this today, this is a viral uh, photograph that came out of a school in Georgia. And notice all these kids are in school. I don't see any masks. Um, and the young lady who took this picture, who worked for the school paper, took this picture and shared it. And she got suspended from the school. I mean, I find that hard to believe. You got suspended for sharing a picture. And apparently there was a policy that had been expressed to the kids and to the teachers and um, that they were not going to tolerate anything that made the school system look bad. So I can understand a school system wanting to go that direction, but uh, this is a bigger, bigger problem than finding ways to make ourselves look good. This is not about appearances. Uh, and John Schott says, yes, the suspension was rescinded today. By the way, John, Larry, please share. Um, Here's the, uh, the Georgia student who posted the photo. She's, she's no longer suspended. And she said uh, this was a good and necessary bit of trouble to get in. And I believe, and I believe she's correct. And look at the courage of this young woman. If she's willing to do that, the rest of us need to be willing to wear a mask. It's not that big a deal. And it does make a difference. Now, to be fair, we got mixed messages about the mask. We got told, don't wear masks early on. And I think the reason for that was that there wasn't enough PPE for people working in the hospitals. There was just not a way for them to protect themselves. And so the idea was uh, that, the, that you don't need the M95 or the N95 mask. We need, um, you know, you, you don't need the masks. Well, guess what? It turns out that nations that already were used to wearing masks during times of illness, like Japan, like South Korea, they did very, very, very well. It turns out the masks are very important. So the idea that we're fighting over masks is a real problem. Uh, this is kind of related. Uh, and this is a story, I believe, that's in Vox. And it's a, a discussion of... Um, Where's the Republican Party going to go now that President Trump appears to be in President Trump yeah, appears to be in meltdown? Now we can't uh, count on that. Um, we can't count on uh, President Trump. That guy is going to do his best to win, but we are going to have to. That's why we're getting angry. We're getting angry to focus ourselves to get ready to do what we need to do to. Uh, get him out of office. But still the problem of inequality is one that faces everyone in the United States. We are suffering as a society. Even if you're well off, I would say America is not a safe place for a lot of us because, um, uh, because of the level of inequality. And the further that inequality goes, the more the more that people who are wealthy are going to have to protect themselves. They're going to have to build taller walls around their houses, bigger gates, more security guards, all that sort of thing. Um, uh, Barbara says, I have a T-shirt with an evil-looking cat on it wearing a mask. It says, hiss off. When I wear it, no one comes near me. I think that's a, I think I might need that T-shirt. Um, anyway, inequality is one of the things that, 
when you're trying to discuss where we need to go as a country, you, you, the thing I'm trying to do is not simplify it to the, being, to the point of being uh, kind of watered down and useless. You're trying to find unifying themes. And one of the unifying themes that I think is important is the idea of inequality, that inequality is increasing beyond any point that it, that it has been in the nation's history, except possibly uh, during, uh, uh, during, I guess, the uh, Roaring Twenties, um, during the time of all the monopolies and the, and the oligarchs and that sort of thing. But we're very seriously economically in, uh, unequal, there's a broad range between the people who have whole lots of money. I'm looking at you, Jeff Bezos, with so much money it would take five minutes just to look at a graphic that would show that. Um, and people who work. And look, I'm someone who worked all my life. I, I didn't get paid unless I worked. So one of the things I talk about is that people who work need to make more. And guess what? People who want to work, people who work, they don't need that much more. They just want to live a dignified life. They want to be able to raise a family, raise their kids. They want to be able to send their kids off to higher education maybe, maybe have a vacation every so often, save for their retirement, maybe buy a boat or a motorcycle or something. They don't really want much. You know, They're not thinking about the idea of maybe if I get enough money, I'll buy a personal submersible or a private island. So Anyway, that's, that's just where I'm at. Uh, this, by the way, is a chart from that same article on Vox, and it shows a share of national income of the bottom 50% and the top 1%. And notice all the way at the left, it's um, pretty far back, I, and it's so small I can't read it. But I believe it's uh, possibly 1950 or 1960 on the left. And... On the top in 1960, those are people who work, you know, the bottom 50%. They were getting paid a decent amount of money, and that started to decline pretty seriously. The bottom group are the 1%, and look at how they have prospered. And this, this is what is bad for our country. This is what is making the nation unstable. This is what is making this particular period in history so dangerous. And it's also what divides us. Um, you know, I'm going to, uh, oh, let's see, one more quick story. One more quick story. Um, the feds have seized Louisville's PNC Plaza, saying that it was bought by Ukrainian embezzlers. Wow, there's a story. Uh, Ukrainian oligarchs, I can't pronounce their names, who own private bank, embezzled and defrauded that bank of billions of dollars. They purchased hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate, including PNC Plaza in Louisville. So this is an ongoing thing, but this is, again, corruption. This is the corruption of money. If the answers to every social problem are how much money will we make, we get this type of thing. This is corruption. Now, I'm going to change gears here. Um, uh, I have one other funny thing that, to share with you, and let me see if I can just do this on the, uh, on the fly. I may not have gotten it. Um, yeah, I can't do it. I had a great picture that uh, I guess I'll, I'll just have to wait till um, I'll have to wait till Monday to share it with you. And by the way, remember, Kenny Fogel is going to be here on, or on Tuesday. Kenny Fogel will be here talking to us about the rural caucus that's being put together by the DNC and the state, the KDP. So I'm going to call someone that I met when I was running, and uh, his name is Andy. And Andy is uh, from Owensboro. And Andy and I don't agree on very much, but Andy's generously agreed to be part of a conversation. And, you know, we have had these long conversations where we, um, I think the proper term is argue. And I talked with Andy earlier today, and we decided we would try something different. Um, so uh, let me see if I can get Andy on the phone. Let's see if we can get Andy to answer. Hello. Andy, how are you doing? Doing good. You know, that's a dangerous question these days <laughs> <laughs> because of dealing with the, the pandemic and the virus and all that. Um, Andy, are you still working? Uh, yes. 
So uh, are you having to, you know, wear masks or how is how is the virus changing your life right now, your day to day uh, life? Well, now, uh, every day, of course, when we go somewhere, like even where I live at, we got to wear a mask and and we got to like when you go into a restaurant, you got to have a mask on. So that's just a new norm for a while. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that you're in agreement that, that you're willing to wear the mask because some people aren't oh. apparently. Oh, I know. And to me, if it's to help uh, save somebody, yeah, or even save myself. I mean, you know, keep myself healthy or even to protect my mom. Yeah, because my mom's 83. So, yeah, and and we we want to protect our families. Um, uh, and and about the only way that we can do it right now is to wear those masks when we go out, wash our hands all the time. I'm washing my hands so much. When I go to the grocery store, I bring some sanitizer and i use that and my hands start to burn exactly but i guess you're so do you mind telling us what kind of work you do uh i am a bus monitor uh i work um i'm a bus monitor help kids get on and off the bus and everything so. oh my goodness are the are the schools open in davis county now uh not yet uh the first day for students i think will be on the 24th and i imagine there have been a lot of discussions about that uh, yes. Okay. Are you? What special precautions are they taking in Davis County to uh, deal with this? Uh, I know they said like the, they were going to like uh, I know one two days a group of kids going to be going Monday and Tuesday. Then Wednesday going to be shut down to clean. Thursday and Friday the other group, and then they also going to be like uh, having online so students can do it online if they need to. Well, that's a that sounds like a plan. I, I mean, it's pretty nerve wracking. I don't know if you saw the pictures from the Georgia school where they had opened up and um, uh, a student took a picture of the kids changing classes and they were, it looked like a normal day in the hallway. Then none of them were wearing masks and the student got suspended, but they've, they've rescinded that. She's, she's now, she's now allowed to go back in school, but it was an entire school not wearing masks. And, and and that's sad. I mean, because they to me, I think they should have been wearing the mask. And why they didn't, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, it's sad. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things we say, and you're going to hear. Um, I don't know if you remember the old Godzilla movies, but one of the things I talk about is that I believe we have to go um, Godzilla on the virus. I don't know if you've seen any Godzilla movies, but the idea is <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. But that's the idea is that we. Um, we really need to get serious about it. So when you and I talked earlier, uh, you know, you and I both recognize that the country is very, very divided and we don't have a lot of dialogue that goes on between the opposite sides in the country, which is largely divided between Republicans and Democrats. And I proposed an idea to you instead of, you know, talking about things we disagree with that we try and find some things we agree with and, um, you know, so I'm going to present some things that I think you'll agree with. These aren't things that I necessarily want you to agree with. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to argue that way. I'm just trying to say, I think, knowing you, Andy, that maybe you'll agree with some of these things. And, okay. and maybe you've got some things, too. And we're going to talk about the things we agree with. If we find something we disagree with, then we can each make a statement about it. But then we're going to move on and look for another thing to agree with. Hey, hey. Exactly. Yeah. And my hope is that you'll come back every so often and we'll start to work our way through some of the problems that are not getting talked about in this country because people disagree. So let me go first. And I think I warned you about this one. It's my feeling that people who work should be paid more. Uh, yes, most definitely. I, I do agree. Um, in fact, you know, right now we have a um, a national uh, minimum wage of seven dollars and twenty-five cents, which means someone getting minimum wage uh, earns fifteen thousand and eighty dollars a year, which is obviously not enough to survive. Um, and uh, you know, we could raise that minimum wage quite a bit. I realize there would be problems with the economy, but um, I think we would have a better country if working people just got paid a substantial amount more. And most people who work would be okay with more money. Uh, most, most definitely, yes. Uh, okay, great. So do you have something that 
I can agree with. Um, I think the, this would be my opinion too. Uh, I, I know California has done that, and everybody was complaining out there. You know, we we need more money, need more money. So they they raised the minimum wage in California, and then when they did, the um, the businesses they uh, they jacked all the prices up, and so it went to the consumer. So it didn't really help that much. To me, this is, would be my philosophy because it does work. Um, if you, uh, I know a long time ago, Andrew Mullen, he was chief of staff. I don't know what president he was under, but uh, the economy was bad. And Andrew Mullen uh, told the president, he said, let's cut taxes from top to bottom. And when you cut taxes from top to bottom, then everybody benefits. And so if you cut taxes, then like your businesses, then they could afford to uh, give the people uh, more money and it wouldn't hurt nobody. Everybody would benefit. Yeah. So uh, I don't completely agree with that, but I'll show, I'll, I'll show some agreement. And I, I guess the way I would say it is that I don't really care how much I pay in taxes if I get my money's worth. Exactly. You know, and I think that's the thing. Most of us that complain about taxes being too high, um, if we were getting more benefit for it, if healthcare were less expensive, if schools were less expensive, if we had, you know, a, a national child care uh, uh, program where people who work when they after they've had a, a child, they could go back to work and have a safe place to leave their child without it breaking them. Uh, uh, so I, I think we're I'm going to declare that we've succeeded at our goal today if that's okay with you and i hope you'll come back exactly. and, and talk some more with me i really appreciate you doing this andy i, I really appreciate it oh hey anytime and uh it, it's been a pleasure and um and and i and i understand i mean it, it's very very hard in fact i'll leave i'll leave with one this one note uh i know uh, i've got a dentist appointment late, a little bit later uh, on the 18th and uh just for just uh, I got to have a root canal and just for one tooth, six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, uh, that's, that's, th that's a bargain, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, if we are able to redo health care, that's one of the things I think should we should be including dental, you know, mental health, your vision and your hearing. Those are all separate now. Exactly. And, and they're very expensive. Well, yes, they are. Andy, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to doing this again, and I'm going to play our outgoing theme music. Thank you for being here, Andy, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And um, remember, we're getting angry, but we're using it to focus ourselves. Let's do what we need to do. Hope to see you next week, Monday at 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern. Have a great weekend.